Welcome to our webinar on learning. This presentation was originally given to preschool parents on Parents' Day, October 2014. As a webinar, it's a 15-minute tutorial for parents on learning, how it works, and how to encourage and enhance it. As an educator, I value the connection between school and home. I value the role parents play in supporting their children by volunteering. But, much to my chagrin, studies show that what you do at home is more important than helping me or the teachers at school. So with that in mind, I'm going to take this time to talk about learning and about the things that parents can do to support teachers in giving your children the strong academic foundation they need for their next steps. So if the studies are correct and the things that happen at home are more important than parent involvement at school, what does help children become more capable students? These are the things that really matter. Why isn't hard work up there? That should matter. But look at the last three. Resilience, self-control, and persistence. All three of those are at the heart of hard work. You can't have hard work without them. So on a practical level, what can parents do to nurture these characteristics in their children? We know from experience and from studies that parents who read to their children, talk to them about their day, and give them the right amount of choice and autonomy are raising more successful and happier children. And just as important is the willingness of parents to let their children make mistakes. Parents who encourage their children to accept the consequences of their actions so they can learn from them. It would be easy to say that we take care of the SAT prep at school so you don't have to, but it doesn't work that way. Teachers also have to focus on persistence and integrity and collaboration. Your children's brains are built. They form and develop from the experiences they have in your care and in our care. So how do we take these end goals and truly maximize learning? What does support learning? Certainly not SAT prep. Again, as someone who wants the curriculum and what we do in school to reflect what the science of learning can teach us, these are the things that matter. These are the things the teachers keep in mind as they're teaching and planning lessons, and these are the things you can keep in mind as you're reinforcing the learning that happens at school. Let's start with relevance. Relevance is about making connections. Brains don't grow just by making new brain cells. They grow by making connections between existing information and new information. New information won't stick. It has no meaning unless or until it's been connected to a previous experience. So when you're reading a book or talking about plant life as you rake the leaves, take opportunities to connect what you're reading or what you're doing to something from your child's past or everyday life. Look, it's a picture of the beach in the book. Do you remember when we went there and you heard the waves come one after the other onto the sand? Do you see that tree? It was only this high when you were born. Rote counting the stuffed animals on the bed is one thing. But before you count, ask your children to group the animals. Group them by the ones giving, given to them by their grandmother or the ones they saw in the zoo. Tell stories about your own life to create connections. Tell your child about your own favorite stuffed animals. Help your children make the connections that will make new learning relevant. Here's an example of the importance of relevance for adults. Count the F's in the following passage. Most people count three. That's because the brain has trouble correctly processing the word of. The letter F usually makes the sound in fox. In the word of, it makes the V sound. Your brain overlooked the word of as it scanned for the common sound of F. You don't have the right connection to scan for of. The next key to effective learning is emotions. Emotions can impede learning or they can enhance it. Fight, flight, or freeze is what we do when our emotions are too high. Any emotions. The emotions take over and dominate the scene. In order to bring regulated or calm emotions back, we have to refocus. 
for us and for children, it helps to either change the environment or move. But first, of course, make sure the child feels safe and is safe. When there's a threat or a perceived threat that's causing the emotions, you have to alleviate that first. Go inside if the child is screaming about a bee. But even when a child is stuck thinking about something that's interfering with focus and learning, or even an emotion that is interfering with good behavior, just a change of venue can help the child refocus. Move to another room to talk about what happened. Go inside if it happened outside. Go upstairs if it happened downstairs. Vigorous movement and deep breaths stimulate the chemicals in the brain that reduce emotional stress and relieve tension. So an unplanned run across the yard or up the steps helps us let go of emotional stress, which is what your children have to do before they can pay attention or listen to you. Now let's talk about memory. That has a common connection to learning. How does it work? Aside from being enhanced by relevance, there are two aspects of memory to keep in mind, muscle memory and reflection. Muscle memory is like riding a bike. After you've done it enough times, you don't have to think about it. Muscle memory develops over time, for example, as your children are learning to write their names. But they have to do it over and over before it's automatic enough for them to be thinking about something else while they're doing it. That's why we talk about hands-on activities in school. In the preschool in particular, we want to create the muscle memory that will make writing easier in elementary school. And believe it or not, that muscle memory is enhanced by things like Play-Doh and puzzles. They strengthen the muscles that will then work more smoothly and with less effort, leaving the brain free to concentrate more on what they're writing. The other thing that can enhance learning is reflection, which comes back to the slide about talking to your children and listening to them talk about their day. Reflection helps solidify what they've learned and helps them create a strong pathway to that storage area in the brain where the information is kept, which will help with retrieval of the information later. So after you've gone to the zoo, keep encouraging your child to talk about the animals and what you did and the new vocabulary that came up during the trip. That reflection will enhance the learning and help it stick. What does the brain like to do best? Problem solve. When we give children a challenge, we motivate them to action and to learning. Back to the brain. We want all those synapses and neurotransmitters to snap to it and all that blood to flow. There are two important steps inherent in problem solving. Identifying and articulating the problem and brainstorming all possible solutions. The more involved we are in these two steps, the better we learn. So pose real questions and problems to your children. They'll begin to think of themselves as problem solvers, which is a very important affirmation, aside from being a great way to build brain cells. And novelty. Novelty enhances learning and is fun. When we're exposed to new information, we think about it and evaluate it against what we already know. We look for existing patterns and then we organize the new learning according to these patterns. Novelty also increases our attention. The brain pays less attention to things that are too familiar, but when it's exposed to new information, it searches for patterns that are familiar. It's that search that stimulates the brain. Take a familiar puzzle and turn it upside down. Any activity that can be done backwards, sideways, or upside down immediately becomes more fun. Can't get your child to brush his teeth? Change the routine. Present it as a crazy idea and let him do it before he puts on his pajamas or in a different bathroom, even at the kitchen sink. You can accomplish a lot with humor and novelty. You can't ride bicycles backwards, but you can ride a tricycle backwards. Think what that does for coordination and concentration. Change Simon Says to Harry Says, or change Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to Twinkle Twinkle Little Moon, Goon, Spoon. The mix of the familiar with the novel makes learning more effective by stimulating those synapses to fire. There's a delicate balance with novelty, though. It grabs our attention, but it still needs a familiar context for it to be effective. Remember, too, that when we're overwhelmed, we look for what's familiar. 
Here's an example of how novelty works in adults. Fluent readers don't catch the double blah right away. Beginning readers do. They tend to read word by word, taking in every syllable as a discrete chunk of information. But experienced readers take in phrases and sentences in groups and look for context. Good readers have expectations about the words and where they should be, so it's not as easy to catch an unexpected extra word. Movement plays a surprisingly critical role in learning, particularly with young children. Children need to develop control over their bodies before they can tackle the kind of book learning that starts in elementary school. Even to play with peers, they need control to maneuver around a block tower without knocking it down, whether it's theirs or someone else's. If they're well developed physically, they use less energy on the physical mechanics of a task and more energy on thinking. The sensory system is also important to the ability to pay attention. In order to focus, children need daily doses of what's called vestibular input to improve their balance. They need to go upside down, spin in circles, roll down hills. They need play experiences that get them moving in all different directions, that stimulate the little hair cells in their inner ears. This helps the development of their balance system, which leads to better attention and learning in the classroom. So give them movement opportunities. Make sure they play outside, running and rolling and swinging on swings. The last thing on our list is executive function. This is the air traffic system in our brains. It manages all the planes on all the runways of our lives. The busier we are, the harder it has to work to manage a lot of information and to avoid distraction. Let's look at taking turns. A child has to have inhibitory control to stop when he's doing what he's doing and let someone else have a, have a turn. When it's his turn, he has to remember what he's supposed to be doing, which pulls on working memory. If another child does something unpredictable, he has to adjust, and that's mental flexibility. Learning is not just about vocabulary or numbers and colors and reading and math skills. We need executive function skills to be able to work effectively with distractions with others and with multiple demands. Fortunately, executive function can be trained. That's what we're doing when we help children with intentionality, with paying attention to the here and now. Even for adults, if you can reduce the distractions in your own lives, with phone-free times, for example, you'll find it easier to truly appreciate the here and now, to take a few deep breaths, move your mental distractions to the side, and attend to the present. But it takes practice. When you're playing with your child or listening to her tell you about her day and you find your mind wandering, try to purposefully refocus on the present. Try to ignore all the other planes trying to land on nearby runways. Don't worry about them. Don't judge. But practice this skill. Because even when your child is the one on the left, you have to just pay attention to the moment. Here's a quick review. Relevance. This is what helps your child make connections when he's learning something new. Emotions. They have to be calm and intact. Make sure they're not interfering with learning. Create calm first. Memory is muscle memory and reflection. Don't underestimate the power of practice. Talk about a book when it's finished. Talk about your trips and family events. Problem solving. That's the brain's favorite thing to do. Give your children problems to solve and choices to make and let them see and feel the consequences of their choices firsthand. Novelty. Be funny. Change the words to songs. Change the names of the characters in a familiar book. Brush your teeth in the kitchen sink. Movement. Keep your children moving, even on rainy days. They need to move so those brain cells and that muscle memory and balance will develop. Executive function. Help your children organize their toys and keep them organized. Expose them to new things so they have to experience change. Help them breathe through tough times when their lack of inhibitory control takes over and they need to refocus.
as our first venture into parent education as a, in a webinar. I hope this was helpful to you. Watch for more. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there are specific topics you'd be interested in for the future. And thank you so much for participating.